The Center for Performance Science has set a grand research challenge to investigate scientifically the extent to which making music can affect our health and well-being. This is important because we need to understand how this ubiquitous activity affects our daily lives. Music making is a really subjective and personal experience and in a way it cuts to the heart of what it means to be a human. So making music offers people an opportunity for expression, for identity building. Music making is a really useful way of bringing together the whole person. We have evidence as far back as Paleolithic times of music being used in healing rituals and this tracks across the centuries of music being used in hospitals and medical treaties but it's really only been in the last few decades we've started to see proper scientific research into how music can affect us. People make music all the time. What's important about that is that they make music with other people. It gives them a chance to interact but without having to carry on a conversation. And this sharing and this creating and doing can be a very powerful force in affecting our health and our well-being. So modern day life can be very challenging and we see levels of mental health uh, illnesses really on the increase and it's a, it's a real public health challenge. But music can offer a tool to address some of those issues. It can provide us a space to really engage in the here and now. And through our work with older adults and with mental health service users, we've seen many of these things coming through. So for example, when we ask people to fill in standardised measures of their well-being before and after engaging in music, we see increases. And when we talk to them, we see that these increases are down to these issues around engagement, around increased agency, the ability to actually take initiative and take control of your life through doing music regularly. So what we're finding through our research is that music is an alternative tool, I suppose, to some of the more traditional healthcare treatments and models. And it's a very accessible tool as well. It's something that people can do in their communities, uh, in their homes. And if we can find these sorts of alternative tools that are accessible, then we can release some of the pressures on the healthcare system. When we make music, it enhances our feeling of well-being. But above and beyond these very important psychological changes, we also find that making music can have a profound biological effect on us too. So some people might see testing the health benefits of music as something that's more fluffy or on the peripheral. But in fact, what we found is that these effects that music's having are very tangible and very specific. So we're applying the highest levels of scientific methods and rigour in order to test these in the same way you'd be testing a drugs trial or a therapy trial to really try and work out if music can stand up alongside these other treatments. So we use a range of methodological tools ranging from physiological measures of heart rate, heart rate variability and biological samples through saliva to test for neurotransmitters, hormones and proteins of the immune system. Some of the studies we've looked at in the last few years have been examining how singing in a choir can improve immune function in cancer patients and how something as simple as attending a public concert can reduce stress hormones. And this is very important at a time where we're now recognising that lots of health conditions can't just be treated in a hospital or with medication, but are often seated within people's communities and within their lives. And music has the ability to provide that level of support to people, both within clinical settings and the community.